The GT350 is the epitome of the S550 chassis so far and is probably the best handling Mustang that Ford has ever produced. Today we're going to lower the center of gravity and improve the stance and probably improve the handling by installing a set of Ford Performance lowering springs. These Ford Performance lowering springs will be direct replacement for the factory springs on your 2015 through 2019 GT350 or GT350R that will also fit any 2018 through 2019 Mustang GT when equipped with a Magrine suspension. They're designed to be direct replacements for the factory springs and will work with the factory electronics. This is going to lower your Mustang 20 millimeters all the way around, which works out to just over three quarters of an inch. For this installation, with a lift and a pole jack or a jack and jack stands, torque wrench, half inch ratchet, 18 millimeter socket, 19 millimeter socket, 24 millimeter socket, T60 Torx bit, 3 8 ratchet, 13 millimeter socket, 15 millimeter socket, 17 millimeter wrench, hammer, and a spring compressor. The installation is pretty much the exact same as a normal S550, except for the Magna Ride sensors. So since we are unplugging sensors, I like to disconnect the battery. So remove the wheel, we go up in the engine bay, and we'll start by disconnecting our battery. Okay, now with the strut nuts, we're gonna remove these two, loosen that one. Now we're ready to remove our brake caliper and get our rotors out of the way. Now, unlike the normal Mustang, which has bolts in the back for the caliper, on the Shelby's, they mount on the outside. Two bolts here that take a T60 Torx bit. We're gonna move up to the sway bar. Put a wrench on the back. This is the wiring for the Magna Ride. Basically, wanna pop this plug off the top here. This goes down the bottom inside the strut. So use a clip tool and just get the harness off the strut. Get it out of the way. And while you're there, get the clips off for the ABS as well. Now we're ready to separate the strut from the spill. To do so, you have to loosen up these two nuts and then hammer these two bolts out. And what you want to do is loosen the nut up so it's on the edge of the bolt and then start hammering. That way you don't mushroom the end of the bolt. Once our hammer through, you actually just push the bolts right out. All right, now we can grab the strut. Take off this nut we left hand tight in the engine bay and remove it. All right, back on the table here, we're gonna compress the spring to remove it from the strut assembly. Now, if you don't have a spring compressor like this, and you probably don't, these actually can be rented. You wanna make sure you're careful with the sensor when you're moving the strut around. Still tension, it's easier to remove this nut now. Just loosen it, don't take it all the way off. Remove our factory spring. Here you can see the difference between our Ford Performance spring and our factory spring. Now, obviously this is quite a bit lower. The reason that car only lowers three quarters of an inch is the front is gonna be a lot firmer than the factory spring. And now with the new spring, because it's lower, we've actually found these cars usually don't even need to compress it. Make sure it's seated properly down there. Ready to go back on the car. Okay, I'm gonna put our strut assembly back up into place. Install the nuts to hold it. Now 
All right, let's get the spindle back into the strut. Give you just a little tap to get the spline started. And install the nuts and tighten them down. Okay, put all the sensors back in their clips. Now we'll reattach the sway bar. And now we can reinstall the rotor and the caliper. Throw on a single lug nut on, just makes it easier to get the caliper back on. Right back up top, we're going to tighten these strut nuts to 37 foot pound. Okay, repeat the process on the other side and move on to the rear. We're going to start the rear by taking the wheel off and then unbolting the shock. Now, just to make sure there's no issues with the wiring, disconnect the magnet rod, just unplug it, and bolt the shock. And we're going to unbolt the brake line here. This will give us just a little more room to get the spring out. So to do the rear springs, we have to lower the subframe. We're gonna do one at a time, basically keep the subframe located properly. So what we're gonna do though is support the subframe. Then we can remove the bolts. To remove the front subframe bolt, we we'll start by removing these two little bolts in the back of the bracket. And now we can remove the subframe bolt. Okay, make sure to get the jack stable. Now we can remove the rear subframe bolt. And now we can carefully lower down the subframe. Pull down and remove the spring. I put the insulator onto the new Ford Performance spring. I'm gonna pop this brake line off, give us a little more room. Now, right, once the spring is in place, you need to turn it, make sure it's seated properly in the control arm, and we'll jack it back into place. And then reinstall the subframe bolts. And get them both started before you try to tighten them down. And then we'll torque these to 129 foot pound. And then we can remove our jack. And get the shock back under the mount. And reinstall the bolts. Don't forget to plug the magnet ride back in. And reinstall both of the bolts for the brake line brackets. And repeat the process on the other side. Reinstall your wheels and tires, and your installation is finished. In my opinion, the Ford Performance lowering springs are a perfect choice for your GT350 or 350R. It's a functional low. They're lower than factory, which looks much better, but they still work perfectly with the Magna Ride suspension. The installation is pretty straightforward. Figure about two hours, be back on the road in no time. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed that video. Make sure you click on the CJ button so you subscribe for future videos and click the corner up here for more videos for your Mustang.